How deliver became an inevitable political buzzword. September 5th, Liz his trust proclaimed, We deliver, we deliver, and we deliver. What does she mean? As deputy editor in chief, it is my job to challenge the author's decisions. For example, why get through when you can be patient? Why do when you can? Why equip when you can be ready? Why interrogate when you can ask? And first of all, why must we always deliver? Yes, flexible and multifaceted words. In the sense of deliver us, the postman delivers the letter and the midwife delivers the baby. In the sense of speech, scholars give lectures and speeches of politicians. Fighter performs a punch. A local robber demands to be delivered standing while local counter terrorism forces attempt to free the hostages from custody. In recent years, however, these meanings have been supplanted by the most widespread use of providing instead of to achieve or to achieve. Modern companies commit to achieving or delivering goals at virtually zero and are prepared to take action while moving towards them. They don't make change, they deliver it, especially if it's a transformative change. Media companies distribute content. At a construction site near the NS Tower, the prime contractor describes it as offering a great location rather than construction. Politicians across the spectrum also prefer or say they will provide. In the 2019 election, the Labour Manifesto made 47 feet offers, while the Conservatives made 42. This will provide quality public services for using Crossrail to the north and all the benefits of leaving the EU. But our new Prime Minister seems to be particularly unusually susceptible to disease. Early in the summer's Tory leadership elections, when the possibilities seemed endless, then Prime Minister Nadim Zahawi said that the priority under his highly hypothetical leadership was delivery, delivery, delivery. I yelled at him. In the acceptance speech that finally put the contest to sleep on the 5th of September, Liz Truss demonstrated her commitment to innovation and enterprise by lightly adapting Zahawi's dismal tagline from noun to verb, declaring, in her peroration, My friends, I know that we will deliver, we will deliver, and we will deliver, adding, and I know we will deliver a great victory for the Conservative Party in 2024. History may judge that every part of this sentence, from, my friends, onwards, was a lie. And since then, Truss has kept on delivering. On her disastrous round of local radio interviews, sounding more than ever like a glitching Thatchertron 5000 throwing out error messages, I don't accept the premise of your question, she insisted she would be delivering for places like Stoke in the long term, delivering the investment, delivering the higher wage jobs. Maybe overuse of the word is supposed to suggest dynamism and physicality, an attempt to compensate for everything that Truss's public speaking isn't. Perhaps it is meant to make vague, jam tomorrow pledges seem personal, bespoke, evoking the cheerful neighborhood postie of yore, before Royal Mail's decline and the advent of one of the gig economy's principal algorithm slaves, the drop and scarper delivery driver. Perhaps she is referring to the progenitor of the word, Middle English deliverin. It means, to save, to liberate, and is partly derived from the Latin liberare, to liberate, in a vulgar etymological allusion to her vision of Britannia unchained. Nanny, awakening, abacus a nation freed from all the dead weight and mandates of economics, civil servants, trade treaties, international law, green junk, budget responsibilities, institutional investors, the International Monetary Fund, and Project Scare. Reality, brave the futuristic furnace and plunge headlong into it. But what is reflected in the company's mission statement, quarterly earnings calls, policy reviews, executive summaries, and her summaries is likely to be nothing more than ignorant corporatism and achievements number one. When it comes to what management speak wants to accomplish, Deliver offers a full house. Hiding the disappointing or negative connotations of what is being said is euphemistic, see also, identifying efficiencies, and, taking advantage of synergies, when cuts are made, and pretentious, a noisy, almost complicated way of explaining simple acts. This is not a fluke of fate to be any manager, it's the result of staying on the same career line, with managers, balance sheets, endless meetings, bills, and miserable people. They don't let you, trust and discredit other people's work, and sweat to keep your own work. Ultimately, ride your luck. Of course, that speaks for the other side as well. So, doing is for little people. We don't just do it, we will deliver. But this government is not trying to soften its language in order to speak to the supply class, the core conservative voice. His language is pre-dumped. Nothing else. When the idol of the truss, Margaret Thatcher, came to power, she quoted St. Louis. Francis. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, bring truth. Where there is doubt, may I bring faith. And where there is despair, may you bring hope. These words convey your action with sufficient sensitivity to make it as important as the content of your action.
It's a word both prime ministers might have thought carefully about because it suggests. Instead, the trust ditched its annual report and free market think tank language and moved on anyway. Instead, she has to admit to Laura Kunzberg that she should have prepared better for her mini budget. We should not expect poetry or lofty rhetoric from our leaders in these difficult times. A government that can speak to voters without being condescending or boastful, that uses plain language that ordinary people can understand, that instinctively does not try to deceive, evade, or cover up, it really is. Maybe someone needs to do this.